Michael has left himself, his competition, and his fans speechless. He owns a win streak that goes back two years and a string of championships that started and still hasn't ended. For RC, just winning is hardly even a goal anymore. It's how much can he win by? How far to the front of the pack can he lap? And how many wins can he possibly rack up before somebody finally beats him? Carmichael and the AMA Motocross Championship roll into Millville, Minnesota for round nine. Next on OLN. Motocross Championship presented by FMF. Visit Spring Creek Motocross Park in Millville, Minnesota. Our telecast, as always, is brought to you by Parts Unlimited. Blue skies and a few clouds in the air, something of a relief from the hot, muggy summer weather that is striking most of the nation. The FMF Spring Creek Motocross National presented by Scott USA. I'm Brian Drever, along with David Bailey in the booth, Aaron Bates working pits and paddock for us. And we're glad that you could join us as well here as the riders of the 250 class get set to go on a beautiful day for racing. You know, Brian, sometimes this place can be brutal physically. It's real humid, kind of stuck in this valley here, not much of a breeze. But you see the flags back there moving, the sky looks like a painting. These conditions are awesome right now. It's probably it would be good for Billiman, not the best rider in the heat, but I'll bet you Carmichael's wishing it was hotter. Ricky Carmichael atop the point standings with a dominant performance so far this season and as far back as anyone can remember. Closest to him is Kevin Windham. Chad Reed will not be here. Bubba Stewart will not be here. More on that a little bit later on. Veteran John Dowd is here and has been for most of the rounds this season in the motocross series with an interesting sponsorship package. For more, here's Aaron Bates. John, 11 years ago, you were able to pull it together, take the win here. This weekend, special for you, coming back 11 years later at 40 years old. Yeah, this has always been one of my favorite tracks. You know, they got a, a big sand section back there. Obviously, I like the sand. You've got a big thing going on this weekend. Your competitor, Ricky Carmichael, commands so much respect, still class and sportsmanship. He's sponsoring your ride here this weekend. Yeah, that's it's really awesome. I mean, I, uh, I've i been kind of doing that all year long with uh, the, the top space in my shroud, and uh, it just... You know, Brian Berry from Activate and uh, Scott Taylor, they, they kind of put their heads together and came up with the, the idea. And uh, I guess Ricky was, Ricky was kind of psyched about it. John, being 40 years old, there's guys out here competing against you 20 years younger, half your age. What is it like and how difficult is it being 40 racing against these guys? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm having fun with it. Uh, I'm, I think over the years, you know, I've noticed it, it's a little harder physically to, uh, to keep myself in shape and, and kind of rebound from injuries and stuff like that. But... Uh, but I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun, you know, beating some of the young guys and, and having a good season like, you know, so far this year's going really good. So it, it's been a lot of fun. The main thing, I think it's just fun and it's giving something to him and just uh, showing my appreciation towards him and uh, of a great person he is. Okay, we're working our way towards the end of the season. Things are looking pretty promising right now for a ninth championship under your belt. It'd be nice, you know, I really enjoy this track. Uh, this track is similar to, to my track at home. And uh, looking, you know, looking to uh, try to get another win and uh, see my man John Dowd get up there and get some help. Uh, you know, as far as the title, you know, I just want to keep trying to win races. And if I'm fortunate to wrap it up next week, uh, that'd be nice. But I'm going to need some help from some other riders. Well, here's John Dowd's baseball card, if you will. His career goes back a ways. Yeah, that first line there, 1971. Or no, no, 91. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, John. You know, it's cool that, I mean, to turn 40 yesterday, I'm 43. It seems like, you know, my career has been long gone, but you know, it kind of goes to show that with desire and experience, you can still be out there at any age and being competitive. And this section right here is, certainly takes a, a lot of strength and experience, and John gets through there as fast as anybody except Ricky Carmichael. Well, Ricky Carmichael is the standard by which everyone is judged, a dominant figure in this sport, not unlike Valentino Rossi in road racing or Matt Mladen here in the United States, also on pavement. And Carmichael is simply the best there is. The others, including Kevin Windham here, at least they know how good they have to be to be the best. Right, and you know, Kevin's trying pretty hard, and, and uh, Fonseca has been you know, sniffing that podium with uh, James Stewart missing and Chad Reed missing, but you know, Kevin's just, you can see right there from the lap times, three seconds down already, and you know, Carmichael just always has that two or three second edge. He's not the only thing to worry about here at Millville. 
I'm trying to get everybody motivated is what I want to do. And I got a lot of annoying noisemakers, but it's got to be something that the racers can hear. Well, aside from the whoop monster, David Bailey, there's a lot going on here at the Millville Spring Creek Motocross Park. Well, as soon as they go off the start, they make a right, a couple of switchbacks, and straight through that whoop section where the whoop monster will be. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to hear him when all those bikes come by the first time, but this track has so much elevation and it's got some hard spots and some sandy spots the harder sections get sharper holes the sand gets uh, more rolling bumps. so it's real difficult to set up the bike and it's a, it's a major challenge for all the riders that's why ricky likes it so much looking at our honda starting grid here carmichael as usual will start from the favored position we go all the way through the field the riders pick their spots uh, down the line accordingly nice crowd on hand here as usual the gates are up ready to go the number four and the 14 the two principal contenders for the championship dump the clutch and fire through the sandy mud here at the Spring Creek Motocross Park. Ricky Carmichael with the whole shot. That's trouble for everybody else. Excellent start for number 77, Matt Gerke. Edges out Fonseca right there. Fonseca doesn't weigh much, and he's, I think he's actually lighter than Carmichael. And on that big 450, you'd think he'd be up there able to put himself in front of Gerke, but Matt has been riding phenomenal in the beginning of these races. I think he's just going to start getting more and more comfortable and be able to stay there longer. But off to a great start. You know, of course, Carmichael's off to a great start. It happens every week. Ricky Carmichael may be small in stature, but as the expression says, a small piece of leather, but well put together. This guy is tough, strong, well-trained, and already on lap number one, he's opening part of that three-second advantage that he's had over everybody else in practice. Gerke's right there, and uh, so is Ernesto Fonseca. How's that lead already, Brian? You know, I mean, they've only gone about 300 yards in this, this first lap, and he's already got himself a nice gap. He can afford to make a pretty good-sized mistake, maybe even stall it in the corner and bump it real quick, and not even lose the lead. And the only guys I can see that really can challenge him are these two right here. As a matter of fact, he just popped up on our screen, and you know, by the time they can get into second, I don't think they're ever going to see Carmichael unless they look over on a jump and see him on the other side of the valley. Fonseca in third, Gulliman fourth, and the rest strung out behind them as uh, Matt Gurkha is still taking advantage of a good start. We've seen him do this a couple of times over the last several rounds. Yeah, he's still got his gap. It's not like he's there and holding people up. Wyndham really starting to force the issue right now. Well, he has to. I mean, yeah. Ricky Carmichael is out in front. Nice little bump pass there on the number 24, Ernesto Fonseca. Kevin Wyndham goes by, taking no prisoners, trying to get up to the front. Yeah, Fonseca, just, he's, he's got to be feeling like, oh, man, well, I hope no one saw that. But unfortunately, Ernesto, we got that on tape. And when you get passed on the outside like that, that's just an indication that you need to hurry up a little bit more. And Kevin, you know, he, he took the line perfect. And uh, he, he couldn't afford a mistake right there. They would have made more contact and fouled each other up a bit. Matt Girk out of Lake Helen, Florida, on his Suzuki, still running in second position and uh, doing a pretty good job of it right now. We often see a rider that gets, you know, what you might call an opportunistic hole shot, get past pretty quickly on the first lap. Girk is holding them off. Here comes the number 14, Kevin Window, on the inside this time. Now around the outside. Can he make the pass? Not yet. Now, it's not to say that Kevin doesn't try. You know, and ride with this much intensity every week, but it just seems like he's really pushing hard right now because he's got the desire to get up there and run with Carmichael. What I think he's trying to do is position himself close enough to Gerke to get him through this whoop section, but Gerke is a sand rider. He may hold his own through here. From Florida, a sand rider like Carmichael himself who said that this spring tree motocross track is very much like his own practice track at home. Wyndham makes the move on the inside, goes a little wide, manages to rail through there and make the pass stick. And you notice up in front of those guys, there was just a tiny little glimpse, if you look carefully, of Carmichael up there. So, you know, Wyndham knew he had to make that move quick if he had any shot at keeping with him. You can't see a guy in front of you. It's pretty tough to stay motivated and gauge your progress and, and uh, sort of figure out the pace. But as soon as you got a guy in your sights, you know, you've you got something to shoot for, and Kevin's barely getting a glimpse of him right now. It's like having a pair of binoculars, but looking at them the wrong way, watching for Ricky Carmichael disappear into the distance up ahead. A little further back in the field there, John Dow, the number 16. We also see uh, Preston and Robbie Raynard making the move up to the 250s here. Third quick in practice. This battle going on. Fifth position is a good one. You know, when you watch Wyndham, he looks so graceful and, you know, 
In this moto, though, it looks like he's pushing it pretty hard. He's, he's got, he's riding with some intensity. It looks like he's putting out some effort. With Raynard, it, it looks like he's just riding around, checking the track out. It's only a second or third lap. He, he rides so effortless. He is trying. I, I'm not saying that, it, that uh, he needs to change anything at all. It's just that, and to watch him do things out here on this racetrack, it, he's just got it so much more figured out than most of these other guys. Doesn't take him any energy, and he's had some wins here. This is a track that he really likes. Moved up to the 450, makes the pass, and off to a pretty good start. He was third fastest in practice this morning. John Dowd holding both of them off, though, for the time being here. A man racing against a couple of riders that are almost half his age. Dowdy doing a pretty good job there on the number 16 Suzuki with the Carmichael sponsorship for this weekend. we got a little change of position behind Dowd. And Billiman was there trying to start his bike. Still trying to start his bike. David Billiman, who had been running up in third position or a challenge for third, is not there anymore. We'll be back with more to continue here as Parts Unlimited presents our telecast of the AMA Motocross Series by FMF. Ricky Carmichael out in front. Looks like he's on another training ride on his own track. He's he, got this place to himself. He makes that look easy. There's the gap back to Wyndham. And he's not letting him get away. Carmichael's pulling about a second, maybe a second and a half. And, and uh, that's still a lot, but not as much as it's been in the past. So this is the track where... Uh, Kevin typically doesn't hang as close to Ricky as he is today so far. And, and these moves, you know, these guys make it look pretty easy, but you see how they got to have their front wheel touch all the tops. If you let your front wheel go down any one of those, it pops you way up in the air like it did for Preston. If you get popped up in the air a little bit sideways, when you hit again, you bounce the other way, and that's when you go down. It's really important to keep the front wheel on the top and keep the bike going straight. Preston challenging John Dowd for that number four spot. Has been able to pull up alongside a couple of times. For the first time, he gets a wheel in front, both wheels in front, and he takes off. Behind him, an even closer battle going on for sixth and seventh spot. John Dowd losing his uh, position there to Travis Preston, but now once Preston has gotten by, he's starting to open the gap. It surprises me a little bit that Preston was able to make that pass. It surprised me that he was able to pass John to make that pass. Here's another look at it. All Preston really needed to do, he had a better line, so all he needed to do was just pull up side by side with John and, and head it into that right hander at the end and pass to take care of itself. The same way that Wyndham was able to pass Gerke at the end of the first section. And, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm impressed with John. I don't see anything really wrong with what he's doing out there. He seems to be going fast. He's holding his gap on everybody else. So I, I think it kind of goes to show how well that uh, Travis Preston's riding so far. Ricky Carmichael just on a Sunday stroll here now. He's opened a fairly significant gap over Kevin Wyndham, who's trying everything he can to close it. Even more impressive is the gap behind Wyndham to the third place, Matt Gurka, and everybody else is trying to uh, catch up to him. Watch Ricky come out of this right hand or see if he airs this jump out. No, nope. besides the layup, he, that, the ruts before the jump are are starting to uh, develop and get pretty deep and it's tough to get a run at it but every once in a while they get a good clean run out of the corner they jump the entire plateau and then it steps down once more and they jump all the way to the downside there so it's a huge leap that was a nice shot and a close call there from the mechanical signal board these guys all watching very intently what's going on as the loop monster is getting in his chops too He's got plenty of props, you know, he's, he's one great big prop himself, but he's got more, he's got noise, he's got signs. I admire the, the heart he has and his, just uh, his support of these guys. And, you know, this, this section is unlike any other. I mean, Southwick is rough, but it's a slightly different kind, it's not quite as consistent. And uh, last year they really made that section a lot longer than it ever had been. Some of the riders were like, that's ridiculous. But the ones that are in really good shape and set their bikes up right can make a lot of time through here. John Dowd, who lost the number four position to Travis Preston, is now coming under attack from the 24 of Ernesto Fonseca. So John Dowd easing back into the clutches of the riders behind him one by one. He has been uh, running extremely well. Now he's starting to slip back a little bit. Here comes Fonseca up on the inside. Can't make it work there. You know, more than I'm watching John right now, I don't know if he's entirely comfortable. It's hard to, it's hard to say if the Fonseca and Preston are riding really well or, or if uh, John maybe is just a little bit tight right now or nervous and probably settle down here after a few laps. But, you know, once it's a bummer when that happens because you, you give up a few positions and when you start to feel good, you got to work back past all those guys and who you were with in the first place is gone. Well, it's a long race, and it can go a number of different ways. Ernesto Fonseca working John Dowd for a while and now making the pass. 
here comes John. Maybe he's got something to answer back. Maybe he will start to feel better, as you say, and uh, be able to recover a little bit in the positions that he has now lost. Ernesto Fonseca giving him an opportunity there, slowing down a little bit. There's Fonseca. Dowd is not that far behind. You know what Fonseca does really well? Besides, he rides that 450 great because he's got such good throttle control. He's real precise. Um, he picks great lines, and, you know, it's... Uh, it's usually John Dow that has the great lines. But Fonseca was able to outclass him a little bit there, and John's still looking. There's still little mistakes here and there that are costing him. It's nothing big. It's just, just enough to let somebody that's like Fonseca who's riding just a tiny bit better go ahead and make that pass and check out some. Well, the Spring Creek track here is starting to look a little bit like a war zone. Pick a rut. Any rut. you got a lot of choices. And it's getting Malik Billman starting to move back up. That's the corner where he stalled it early on, so... Gets passed by Michael Burns, 250, getting around the four-stroke. I don't know if he can make a stick or not. Nope. Goes down the hill, but he's still there, right there. Burn on that green bike. There's David Gulliman, the number 12, running in ninth spot after stalling the bike out. Takes a while to get those things started when that happens as well. We'll continue to watch these battles here at the Spring Creek Motocross Track in Hillville, Minnesota. Here's the top eight. Flashback takes us to 1994 here at Spring Creek Motocross Park, the year that John Dowd won the race. We've given away the ending now, David. <laughs> and he's holding off some fast company. That's McGrath back there, number two on the Honda. LaRocco, number seven. LaRocco is going to win the championship. Makes the pass right here, gets a little elbow. John was wise to lay up, but uh, LaRocco won the championship that year by a zillion points, but it was John Dowd that won this race and Binghamton year second overall then. And the following year, John Dowd earned a factory Yamaha ride. Matt Gerke on the number 77 passed by Travis Preston, who's definitely on the way forward here in this race. And Gerke's tenure in the top three has apparently come to an end. You know, uh, it looked like to me after Preston made that move, uh, I think Gerke realized that, you know, in order to stay somewhat comfortable out there and, and you know, continue to put in a fine ride and get to the checkered flag, still in good position. He wasn't going to fight with him, but he looked over his shoulder as soon as Preston made the move, and he saw that huge gap back to the next riders, and he started to cruise a little bit. And that's dangerous, because even though that's a big gap, those guys are going to start pushing harder late in the race, and if he lays up, then this, this good finish he had going is going to disappear. Well, it's certainly easier, you know, less, less changes early in the race than it does later. Everybody's getting tired. Things start to happen more quickly. If you relax just a little bit in the later laps, a guy that's feeling strong and coming on is going to pass you like you're backing up. Yeah, you got to ride hard and keep that gap. You know, and like I said earlier, when you can see somebody, even if he's way up there, you just, especially at the end, you got a rider like Nick Way. LaRocco was always good at that. It's coming on strong at the end. And uh, Nick, Nick, he didn't get a great start, but he is really putting on a charge now. He also won this race in the 125 class back in 99, and it's around Dowd as well. So Dowd is just not 100% uh, right now. I can't tell what it is. I think he's just not comfortable, riding a little tight, maybe nervous. Hey, he's 40. We'll, we'll give him a break. <laughs> well, and maybe he celebrated his birthday a little too hard. We're only guessing, and that is probably not true. There's the number 24, Ernesto Fonseca. The cake won't really help out till the second moto. There you go. Well, the sugar kicks in. We're going to see John Dowd on top of the box in the second moto. That's our prediction right now. The number 12 coming up behind him is David Bulliman. And that really gives you an indication of how John Dowd is struggling and how Bulliman has recovered from the mistake or uh, from the problem he had stalling the bike out at the beginning of the race. Yeah, and also with Bulliman, I think it's a little bit pride, too. He's like, man, what am I doing back here? I'm the only guy here for Yamaha. Stalled the bike, and they're looking for a podium, and I'm blowing it. So he's putting out a little bit extra effort, I would imagine. Good play. Ernesto Fonseca on the number 24 machine. 105th, and he's not alone. A good line down that hill. I talked about his lines a little earlier. You see Nick right there trying to stay off that shiny stuff and hook up better. And, uh, getting a lesson right here and the you know, good lines around the track. And when you catch somebody like Fonseca that's got the track pretty wired, you know, even though this track is 30, 40, 50 feet wide in spots, there's still a line that's about a tire width wide that's good. And to try to make something happen, you got to go through the mud. And, and uh, you know, of course, you want to stay out of the roost, keep your vision clear, and not get peppered with dirt. But it's tough to make something happen. He did it. Nick Way sailing right past Ernesto Fonseca and coming up on a little bit of traffic in the process. 
as uh, Nick Way definitely moving towards the front here on his number 27 machine, the Unbound Energy Sponsor Honda. That's a good effort from Nick. I, I was giving my little uh, soliloquy there of like how hard it was going to be for him to make the move and got up to the top of the hill and caught oh. Ernesto sleeping a little bit. And you talk about feeling comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> that was close, maybe a little too close. That's a tough one. You know, we'll go back to Denver. We were watching uh, 125 class where uh, Andrew Short's mechanic was putting the board out in front of Michael Lessie, and Michael Lessie's mechanic Paul ran down there and did a little chest bump. Looked like a baseball coach and an umpire getting into it. And it was for that reason, putting the pit board out and blocking a little bit. I don't think Kenny was trying to do anything there. He was trying to get a signal to his rider. Here is Ricky Carmichael. As we talk about a man in his comfort zone. Well, this is worth another look, actually. <laughs> Whoa! Man, you know, Nick does not want to... I talked about that line that's only a tire width wide. Nick wasn't going to move and, and take a line he didn't like just to stay clear of that pit board. Those things are it's plastic, you know. He's wearing protective gear. It's a good thing he didn't take his hand with him. Here is... Ricky Carmichael on the number four machine, so far out in front that you can signal almost anything you wanted to him. Right now, mechanic Mike Gossler is signaling, hey, I'm with Aaron Bates. Mike, we just saw your son race by there. What's it like? Double the fun. You didn't have time to acknowledge him because you're too busy writing on the, on the pit board for RC. Yeah, he's about ready to get laughed. I got to tell him to get out of the way. <laughs> you don't want to see that take place since your own son, right? Nah, not really, but the way it goes. It happens sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Poor Goose, the, the highs and the lows, right? Well, you know what, though? It, uh, his son is really riding well. He moved up to the 450 and uh, into the 250 class and uh, rode strong in his heat race. Ricky already started to celebrate, and, but uh, it seemed like a good move. You know, he was not happy in the 125 class. He wasn't completely jiving with uh, the Motor World Suzuki team, so he decided to do his things on his own, ride the 450. And, and uh, it's got to be a handful for him, but you know, he was looking pretty good up till later stages of this race. Like Mike said, he's about to get loud. You can see him just coming out of that corner just now. Well, the boss, or I should say the sponsor, is coming up behind him. Ricky Carmichael on the number four will be passing number 34, Christopher. Gossler? They Jeff. ride together a little bit during the week. And uh, so Ricky will be like, when he sees him, he's like, come on, man. He's faster than that on Wednesday. What happened? Ricky Carmichael on the final lap here, moto number one, Spring Creek Motocross Park National. And uh, on cruise control, celebrating, waving to the crowd, checking out the girls, doing whatever it is he wants to do. He's already gotten his work done. He can relax now, a little bit like a coffee break. Ricky Carmichael on the final lap. And uh, just once, I'd like to see uh, whoever's in second push really hard so that he didn't get to just cruise around this last lap. You know, I would never let the guy cruise around, but he had a pretty darn big major first one. A very fine performance and another win for RC. Creek Motocross Park looked almost as relaxed as the man who won the race. RC's with Aaron Bates. Hey, your goal here today was to lap up to 10th place. You well exceeded that goal. We actually lost count of actually how far you did lap up to, but you're definitely over 10th place. How, are you, how stoked are you to achieve your goal? Oh, definitely really stoked. You know, uh, main person I wanted to lap was my mechanic's son, Chris Gosser. I told him, uh, you know, he's been wanting to ride the 450 class, 450 class, and said, all right, well, you know, you think it's that easy. We'll see what happens. And uh, so I, I lapped him. I don't care about anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. We'll see you back for Moto2. Thank you. And here are the results. Carmichael, Wyndham, and Preston with his first ever podium finish in a moto here. Our Suzuki Moto Results Board. Take a look and uh, hopefully you'll find the name of your favorite rider, Robbie Raynard, ending up in 11th spot. How about KW, who finished second? Yeah, I felt pretty good. Uh, man, Rich is riding so far out there and uh, was hauling, but I had a hard time staying with him. And and I'm just trying to keep racing as hard as I can, try to catch him. And, uh, you know, it's a shame all the competition ain't here this weekend. But, uh, you know, Chad's getting ready for next year already. I uh, had to have some surgery and uh, you know, ready to see Bubba back out here. I kind of hate being a one-man show with Ricky and uh, just kind of following him around. It's so tough to get up there. We just got to keep working at it. It's uh, kind of the same old song and dance. Well, we made our way all the way back to the pits to try to track down Travis Preston, who didn't make his way up to the podium. To, that he's just celebrating his very first outdoor podium finish, taking a third place. He appeared to be fine, but he wasn't able to come out and speak with us at the moment. 
Tuktuk team manager Eric Kehoe stating that apparently he's got some issues going on right now. Hopefully we'll be seeing him back for moto number two. Issues. Well, let's look that one up in our Funk and Waggles. But congratulations to Travis Preston for his first outdoor podium. Nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track is an AMA member. How about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA rights riding and racing. Now let's go between the motos and a new exhibit at the AMA Museum called Motocross America. This is called Motocross America, and it all took place in the last 40 years. It's, it's a real new, vital, fresh thing. You can kind of see a difference in the crowd. A lot more of them look like you, maybe like me. Uh, guys that raced in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, are coming in now instead of the fringe guys, you know, the Harley guys and such. So we got a new thing going on here. It's a lot more vital. Uh, it's, it's our deepest story so far also. This exhibit, I think, will bring to people's attention the value of motocross and the importance of the history we have. As a sport, we have a pretty short memory. Uh, people tend to forget the heroes and the motorcycles and so forth quickly, but I think this is the kind of thing that'll bring that back to people. I, I'm really impressed to see, uh, see th this exhibition and, uh, you know, I could never think that these things could happen when I came here the first time. So I know from the beginning that it's going to be a success, but not as big as it is today. Thorsten was, uh, he was the first guy basically to come over here and uh, being the, the businessman that he is, he saw the opportunities and he was uh, very instrumental on, on making things happen and uh, talked to, to us, uh, to me and Joel Robert and um, Bickers and, and, uh, and then the following year we came over here with uh, six riders and started the series and that was the beginning of uh, what became the Trans AMA series and, uh, and then all this is what followed, I guess. I started riding motocross in 75, and I still had uh, leather, you know, leather pants. Uh, there's some of these uh, griffs here. I had some of those. I mean, I remember when the, uh, when the V2000 JT chest protector came out, uh, I mean, I just had to have it. Now, the magazines almost every month, I mean, they're recognizing the pioneers in the sport. And it's just awesome. Glad I held on to this stuff in my grandma's basement. The thing I like most is uh, somebody sees, you know, a pair of boots, gloves, a uh, magazine cover that just lights them off, takes them back 20, 30 years, you know, and, and that's that's my satisfaction here as a director. And then here we have uh, Jeremy McGrath's 1995 Supercross Championship bike. I didn't quite recognize what this, uh, you know, whose bike this was, and then I went around the backside, and then it became a lot clearer. <laughs> <laughs> DB has to bring back a couple of memories for you too, right? Yeah, they have one of my bikes up there and some gear, and it's great that they've preserved all that stuff. Moto 2 coming up. What will Ricky Carmichael do? Rewrite the record books is what he's doing already. Speaking of records, Ricky Carmichael's been undefeated for over two years now, and here at Millville, he has never lost a moto or an overall win since 2000. We're going to see if he's able to put it all together here. We saw him do it moto number one. Let's check to see if he's able to pull it off again for moto two. Well, odds are, as we take a look at our Honda starting grid, that he will be able to pull it off again. I mean, no one has been able to step up to challenge just yet. And uh, well, they got another chance. Well, yeah, you know, I think Kevin's interview after the first moto pretty much says it all. No sense in going back over that. What I am impressed with is some of the guys that are sneaking in there that haven't been in a while. Gerke's first moto fourth place finish is something to write home about. See if he can back that up. Here we go. Riding through the ruts. Ricky Carmichael. Kevin Windham with a wheel ahead going into the turn. This will be a little different. Windham in front. Carmichael second. And we may have a race this time around. Here comes Ricky around the outside. And now on the inside, challenging already. But Kevin Windham is out in front. Carmichael skies along behind him. Hey, this is fun. Here comes the whoops, though. See what Ricky does. Wow, he has so much drive off the second one. Going up alongside, here comes Ricky Carmichael on the exit of the whoops. He takes the lead. Wyndham trying to pull back on the inside, but RC has got the line and now is out in front. It only took a few turns for him to get there. Kevin trying to go back to the inside. The same thing back to him. Doesn't quite have enough on him. And you know, it's, I mean, uh, this isn't really a chop to Kevin. I, I really admire Kevin. I love watching him ride and I think he's a great person for the sport, but it, 
he just shouldn't have gone wide for that first section. He should have known and, and felt that pressure. And as soon as you drift wide like that, all somebody has to do is just get close and they can block past you at the end. So I think he's going to look at that later and be like, man. But on the other hand, Ricky pushed him in there hard and that might have forced him a little wider than he intended to go. Ernesto Fonseca running in fourth spot, a little further forward than he started. Moto number one for Ricky Carmichael. Almost as big a gap coming from behind on the first lap as he had leading out in front. Good start for Rayner. See what he can do here. He's in contact with the leaders, you know, and when you get to ride up front like this, you get to get in the pace of everybody else. Wyndham just coming out of that corner over there. Carmichael, all those guys are in view, and, you know, Rayner's probably getting more and more used to that 450 with each lap. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great track for him. So I, I'm anxious to see what he can do with this. I think he's, he's capable of beating both these guys in front of him. John Dowd also running well here at the start of motor number two. Let's see if he can hang on a little more effectively than he did in the first in the first one. And what is it that they learn from Moto 1 that they can immediately apply to Moto 2? I mean, set up, obviously, but what can the rider do differently? Well, lines. You know, I, I, obviously you need to rest and get some food and, and uh, electrolyte replacement and all that between motos so that you have the energy to go the distance. But looking at lines, oh. you can fill them and getting all crossed up right there. And I think he had a pass. He's trying to make a pass on Rainer, but obviously it didn't stick. So that was rough. Uh, he's got all mixed up, but what I was going to say, the riders themselves can go out in that warm-up lap and take a look at the track. Sean Kohler, number 64, also with a great start. He was really fast yesterday in practice, kind of like Gerke. Privateer kid has sort of been, uh, you know, off the radar, showing up. He's his first ride at uh, Denver in the 250 class. He's real impressive in the first auto. He's been backing it up ever since. But going back to answer your question, during that sight lap, Take your time if you need to and make everyone wait, but you can get, you get your lines figured out so you don't have to spend any time in the race trying to figure it out. I'll tell you what I'd be doing on that siding lap. I'd be dialing 911 for the Corps of Engineers. Come in and fix this place. This, look at this. What a mess. <laughs> yeah, it, it's changing. The whoops actually are, are staying here. Pretty good, you know. I, I thought they would beat up a little bit more or start to get a rut through them and, or some sharp holes and stuff, but uh, I think the section is really, really working out well. It's, it's all this stuff here. It's like I remember listening to Muhammad Ali and some of the boxers back in the day talking about it's not the big punches that always hit you. It's all those jabs adding up. And when you see all these sharp holes right here, that just tears your hands up before the end of this race. I have to say, the whoop section does look extremely good by comparison to some of the other parts of the racetrack. That's the challenge that these riders, including Robbie Rayner, face. Rayner running in fifth spot, coming under attack now. David Buhlemann is right there. No problem stalling this bike this time. It looks like it's running okay. See Rayner hopping over some braking bumps on the way down that hill. He oh, goes yeah. wide. He hits the door wide open, but so effortless the way he rides. Will have taken over the spot from Rainer. We'll take a break and be right back. A barbecue team Suzuki riding tip. And the tip this week, the Millville Whoops, of course. Can't ignore those. And the key is through these is to keep your momentum. And the way to do that is by staying on the top. Notice that Ricky's front wheel never drops down in the bottom until he decides he wants to time some and try to jump through like he does at the end. Now, the way you keep your front wheel at the top, if you're as good and balanced and experienced as Carmichael, you can do it with just throttle control and body English. The way to help that and make it a little bit easier is to use the clutch. So you always have the power band you need. You can get that front wheel right to the top. The forks compress and rebound, and they bounce the front wheel right to the top of the next one. You just keep rowing, a rowing motion all the way through there. If you're going to try to jump two and two or three and three, it's a little bit too slow. So the whole key here is keep the front wheel on the top, so drive right across the top of the fast forward momentum. Oh, John Dowd taking a little bit of a spill there, gets up and recovers. He had been running in third position, and it appears as though maybe he's back to sixth or seventh right now. He's lost at least three or four spots. Tough break for John Dowd. Yeah, it seemed like he might be able to get into a podium spot, too, with where he was running. Even after that first moto, depending on how everyone finishes, that it was a possibility. Now he's got a lot of work to do catching up and you know I, I talked about this track being real difficult with the sand and some of the hard pack stuff and you know as sandy as it is in a lot of places it's, it's a little bit hard packed right there and this front end just washed out really tough to try to choose the right tire here because you know you, 
you go from soft stuff to hard stuff. And uh, when I raced here, I used to use a hard pack front tire. But then it's because you, it, you want it to turn on the hard stuff. And when you're in the sand, the tire's pretty much buried anyway. So you see all the riders going by John when he went down. It takes the energy out of you as well. And I, mean, I think we already mentioned he's 40. Here comes sponsor Ricky Carmichael. No issues or problems for him. We keep going back to John Dowd at age 40. You know what? He's still out there, and a lot of us never even thought about it, or we've already decided to hang it up way high in the air. Ricky Carmichael having some fun. Yep, there's Donnie Schmidt, who is, uh, well, I don't, I don't know even how to put him into words. A former world champion from this area. Uh, unexpected early death it was just really tragic and you know there's a sign here at this track in, in his honor and that jump has been named the holy schmidt jump and ricky carmichael just jumped the whole thing and so did kevin windham staying a lot closer to him in this moment a way to pay homage perhaps to uh, one of the fallen heroes of the sport kevin windham now running in second spot there's the whoop monster look at the front wheels he right to the top let's see kevin drops down in a little bit and every time you drop down in you lose your forward momentum Neither, Kevin doesn't use his clutch either as much to the whoop sections, and I'd be crazy a little bit. You'd never see Chad Reed or, or Jeremy McGrath, for instance, go through that section, or Villeman without the clutch. And the clutch is basically a crutch. If you get a little bit of the, out of the power band, the clutch will help you get through there and put the power band right back where it was, and, and uh, so you never lose your drive. But Carmichael and Wyndham have such great throttle control and confidence, they're able to do it without, just hang on tight. Fonseca and Buhlemann, third and fourth positions, very much at odds here. John Dowd making up some ground after uh, his little tip over in the sandy dirt there, lost the front end. He's making up some uh, progress here, getting some spots back that he lost while he's laying down. Nick Way executing what I was just talking about, the Suzuki riding tips, just skimming across the tops of those, and Rainer started to drop down in and bounce through there. It was much slower, and he's starting to lose position. And John Dowd gaining a few of them back. Well wrapped up, but how about third, Aaron Bates? Well, guys, I'm crunching some numbers down here as we've only got a couple of laps left. As it sits right now, if everything were to remain the same, Ernesto Fonseca will take a third place overall. That would make for two podium finishes in a row for him. If David Billiman passes Ernesto, Travis Preston will take the third overall. And if Travis Preston passes Nick Way and everything remains the same between David Billiman and Ernesto Fonseca, Travis will still get the third overall. It's a number crunching game we've got going on here. Only time will tell. We're going to wait and see what pans out. Well, David, out of all those possible scenarios, the Billiman Fonseca one seems to be about to come through here as uh, the number 12 certainly working hard on that Honda. Now he's really riding aggressive to try to get that post. Him. He blew it at the last round of Washigal, but look at this. He comes right through, so it looks as though Travis Preston might end up third overall if things stay the same as they are right now, but we've still got some racing to go. Gentleman jumping down that downhill to miss some bumps, and it looks like he might have finally put Ernesto away. Ernesto is not easy to pass, and what I really admire about God Ernie is that when he's just got a stack of guys behind him, it's almost as though he's unaware of it because he doesn't change his lines very much. He went wide quite a few times, left the door wide open for Billman and was still able to hold him off. But David's forcing the issue finally to make his pass. Final lap for Ricky Carmichael and the mechanics of the single area are still ducking out of the way. Here's a look at Billman and Fonseca. Yeah, you see how close David had to be coming up that hill. And he probably missed Ernesto's back tire as he crossed over to that inside rut by just a few inches. He had to be that close to, uh, to put the pressure on and force Ernesto wide and finally make that pass work. It looks like Billman can get to the podium. Ricky, I'm not sure who that was right there. Sometimes Rick Johnson's out there wandering. Oh, a little, little blooper there for Ricky. Yeah, and almost headline news. He takes a foot off the peg and we're all gasping for air. Ricky Carmichael riding so error free that when he does make a little boo boo like that, Getting all reared up. Huleman oh. Fonseca still going after it in the company of lap rider for 250 Matthew Burris. I thought Ernesto was done. So either Billman made a mistake somewhere, or I wasn't looking, or Ernesto decided, no, I, I, I want the podium, man. I, now that I thought about it, done some math in my helmet, I need this spot. Wow. Oh, both of them kind of stall out. Oh! 
and Billiman crossing behind the back wheel of Ernesto Fonseca goes down. Now that was really an error committed by himself in an unfortunate circumstance, but Billiman, who passed Fonseca, giving Preston third overall, has just uh, taken it back and handed it to Fonseca. Good job to keep that bike running. That was uh, by the Carson right there. He was lapping. And Look at Ernesto coming down the south side. So you can be a lot more aggressive because he's not hitting any bumps. Billman's over there in the shadow, a lot rougher. Beautiful move by Ernesto to just jump into that burn from the outside. He can't hold it though, so David's like, I got it, but he hesitated a little bit too much because he was off balance as well. And Ernesto he said, all right, let it off. It's the last lap. Are you kidding me? So looks like Ernesto's going to get that boat in, and David's going to have to wait another week. Top spot on the box for both motos and the overall is going to belong to Ricky Carmichael, getting the applause from the officials on his last lap, a tour de force for the man who has been the standard in motocross racing on his way to perhaps a ninth title, takes the checkered flag for the record. Ricky Carmichael wins both motos here today. Ernesto on Seiko, the number 24 bike, running in third spot. It appears as though he will capture third overall to go along with that. Well, I definitely want to congratulate him on his second podium in a row. I mean, that's not easy to do. Of course, you know, Chad Reed and, and uh, James Stewart aren't here, but he's still got to put himself in position to get it done. What's the highlight from here at Spring Creek Motocross Park? Well, we could have picked quite a few, but John Dowd certainly gets the nod. Well, so much attention surrounding him being his birthday yesterday, turning 40, Carmichael sponsoring him. He, uh, he had some problems in the first moto. It didn't look that comfortable. Nick Way, not the best start, but he was able to make his moves, get through the pack, and then this was pretty much the story of the second moto. Wyndham went wide off the start. Carmichael saw that opening and took it, and that was the end of it. Ricky Carmichael with both motos. And here, the little move between Buhlman and Fonseca that had ramifications for the overall. And with that, we take a look at our Suzuki Moto results. Carmichael Windham, same as it ever was. Ernesto Fonseca, the third place spot. Raynard back to eight. And uh, Michael Byrne rounding out the top ten. As we finish up looking at the rest of the results, let's go once again to Aaron Bates. Yeah, you know, I'm just kind of in no man's land. I'm trying my, you know, as hard as I can to get up there and get Ricky. And, uh, you know, I want to put on a race for these guys. I, I hate for the fans to come to the race and feel like they know who's going to win before they get here. You know, that makes me feel like I'm not doing my job. But, you know, I, I just do the best I can. I got to keep charging away, trying to make myself a better rider, regardless of who's in front of me or who's behind me. And, uh, you know, one day, I, I just got to keep plugging away. I, I, I got to get up there, you know. It has to be frustrating as we now take a look at the overall results. Ricky Carmichael and Kevin Windham. It's the uh, Ricky and KW show. Sean Collier rounding out the top 10 with a 12-9 finish here. Let's go to Ernesto. Well, he is able to keep his momentum going, taking his first career podium finish in Washougal. Ernesto, you're able to do it once again here. How did you keep the flow going, especially having a weekend off in between? Yeah, this one was a tough one. I uh, didn't have the, gra the, the greatest first moto. I struggled a little bit and uh you know i didn't think i was it was going to happen but my honda was working great and uh you know what can i say i it, it finally came through at the end hey, you have never ever lost a moto here at millville how what is it going to take and regardless of whatever track it's at what is it going to take to beat you uh you know I, i'll get beat for sure that day is coming and uh I just want to make it as long as possible until that day comes, but uh, I'm, I'm just ecstatic, and uh, I look forward to, to racing and, uh, and trying to win and, and having fun, and that's what I'm doing, and uh, watching the sport grow and watching the young guys come up, it's awesome. Always smiling and rightfully so, Ricky Carmichael, once again, unstoppable. To hear Ricky Carmichael say, watching the young guys coming up, he was the young guy not too long ago. He's still pretty young. What I like is that what Kevin's doing is he's trying to stay close to Ricky, and what that's going to do is make both these guys just a, a dominant force in the motocross the nation coming up soon. Well, that and more here in the motocross championship is in store for you. For David Bailey and Aaron Bates, I'm Brian Drever. We'll see you next time.